Hello. Here's Mary O'Malley again. The third video in a series about my new book, What's in the Way is the Way. The transforming power of trusting your life, all of it, including trusting that your cat jumped into your lap right when you're beginning to make this video. And on this video, I would like to uh, share with you a little bit about my journey. And this is the fertile ground out of which comes everything that I offer in the book. So I had a very challenging childhood. I took on a lot of pain and of course uh, childhood is when the uh, storyteller in your head gets developed and so my storyteller was based on a lot of suffering. I didn't know it then that that pain and suffering would become the fuel for my awakening. All I knew was that I was cut off from myself and I was cut off from life. And so I learned how to hold my breath, tighten my body, and run away to my head like most of us did. It was a very painful way to live. And when I was 19, I was put into a mental hospital for a couple of days, and I could remember pleading with my psychiatrist to let me out, to let me go home, that I would be good. And of course, this didn't work. Um, I got lost even more deeply into my pain. So in my early 20s, I spent all my time eating copious amounts of food, gaining huge amounts of weight, washing it all down with alcohol, and taking every pill I could get my hands on, all in an attempt to run away from my own pain, because I didn't know how to be with it. Nobody had ever taught me. They always tried to fix me. And what I heard when they tried to fix me was there was something wrong with me. When I was 23, I spent the better part of the year in a mental hospital only to try to kill myself three times the year after I got out. So I was lost in what I call the no way out place. That bottomless pit of despair that's wrapped in shame because you feel that you are there because you either did something wrong or you were wrong. I was caught and really truly believed there was no way out. When I was 27, a ray of light came into this darkness. A yoga teacher taught me in the seeing is the movement. This was an absolutely new concept for me. He basically said you don't need to fix your pain, you don't need to understand your pain, you don't need to figure out where it came from, you don't need to resist it, you don't need to deny it. That if you can bring your attention and your pain together, something begins to open up. In the seeing is the movement. He's talking about exactly what Rumi, the beloved Persian poet, was talking about when he said, don't turn away. Keep your gaze on your bandaged places. This is where the light comes in. In other words, when you can bring your attention into your immediate experience, especially those places that you have run away from your whole life, the energy that was bound up in them begins to open and comes back into joy. This is where the light comes in. But there was one difficulty with what the yoga teacher taught me. He didn't teach it with heart. And so for years I would go and look at what I was experiencing but never felt I quite did it right enough or good enough. So I got caught in that world of shame that wraps around all of our pain. But then I had the wonderful grace to meet Stephen Levine in 1984. He has written many books about death and dying, but he really teaches about how to be fully alive. And he taught me how to meet myself in my own heart. He taught me not to turn away from myself when I most needed myself. He showed me how to bring compassion spaciousness and mercy into everything inside of me 
that I had held in judgment and in fear. And the more I looked, the more I saw there was nothing inside of me to be ashamed of or afraid of. Just very young, scared, contracted, angry, lost, judgmental parts of me that needed my own heart. So the more I turned towards myself rather than away and touched all the parts of myself with my heart, I began to open again. And the joy of coming back to life, I'd left so very early, I had very few memories, I only had body memories of what it was like to be fully alive, to be open, to be available to the great wondrous adventure called life. One of the best ways I can describe my experience is of two balls. And I'll try to do this one-handed since Bodhi is taking uh, the other hand. Just imagine a dark ball, a ball of complete darkness. And then imagine a ball of a wing. Now this is where I lived for the first 27 years in life. And I really didn't know or even think that there was anything beyond this. And this place kept on getting darker and darker and darker for me. And then when I met the yoga teacher, it was like when I walked in that room and he started talking, it was like my life had been a, a B-grade, black and white, grainy horror picture. And it turned to a Dolby surround sound, Technicolor, Panavision movie. Because I stepped out of it and I could see that pain and it was just amazing. But I would get right sucked right back into it. And because he didn't teach it with heart, I would get caught in the shame and get lost in this ball of suffering and despair. But then when I met Stephen and I would pop out of it, I could look back and see my own suffering through my own heart. And I began to spend more and more time out here. And I began to, uh, even when I would get sucked back into the ball again, I would spend more time being very aware because I knew when I contracted again, there was something inside of me that needed me. And without hardly even noticing it for a long time, I then began to realize that I lived in this ball. And I would go and visit this ball. This was no longer the world I lived in. And I learned so much whenever I was drawn back into it. I became curious and gathered gifts from my own suffering. And so now this ball of awareness surrounds completely this ball of pain and suffering that I almost died of so many years ago. And I have a completely different relationship with pain and suffering now. It is a doorway back in to life. And this is what what's in the way is the way is all about showing up for our lives, all of it, learning from it, growing from it, so we can again know the joy of being fully alive. I love you. I love you.